I want to show you something super cool in this video. We're going to cover how you can download LiDAR anywhere it's available in the US and display it in QGIS. Let's start by getting some LiDAR data. So we're going to go to the USGS LiDAR Explorer and we're just going to Google that. Um, and it's here, the apps.nationalmap.gov. Um, just click on this. And so when we get here, we can show where LiDAR is available. And then we can go to an area where it's available and we can use PDAL to download it. It's just, this is super cool. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So uh, let's just pull in somewhere interesting, like Northern Utah. Uh, we can show our legend here, QL1. So this is really high quality LiDAR. Let's get some of this high quality stuff and uh, in this area. So now what we can do is if we come over here and we click on this, you can say that we can obtain a list of downloadable products by holding the control key while dragging a box. So we could do that like this. We can just uh, hold control, drag a box, and we can download some LiDAR for this area. And now we can see LiDAR within our AOI and it's gonna give us these point clouds here. Okay, and if we click on this, you can see that we have 1.7 gigs worth of LiDAR data. Now we could download these individually, or we can do something better. We can go to LiDAR processing down here, and we can get a processing script to download this. And this is super, super cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna come here. I've got two square miles selected. It shows the area it's pulling from, okay? And now what's happening here is we're going to download from an entwined point tile. So this is hosted on the cloud. We're going to generate a PDL pipeline that we can then run uh, to download this straight to our computer without downloading all, what was it, nine of those different tiles. This is so cool. So watch this. So we're just going to come down here. We're going to leave all this as it is. Uh, you can adjust this if you want to, if you just want returns first, last, or only. If you want a different format, I'm going to go with LAZ. And I'm going to click Save PDL Pipeline. And I'm going to save this to this temp folder I have here. And I'm just going to, whoops, what did I save it as? Let's, let's save it again. I'm going to save it as just process. So let's click save. And it's going to save this GeoJSON Geo pipeline. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my mini conda prompt. Now I have PDAL installed and I'm using a PDAL environment. If you want to see how to do this, I have a video on how to install PDAL. I'll even show you, it's super easy. You're just going to do conda install dash C, conda dash forge, PDAL dash Python. And that will install PDAL. If I hit enter, it's going to say it's already installed because I've installed it here. Okay, if you want to see how to set up Minicon, I have a whole course on this that's free. It's called Python Quick Start on geospatialschool.com. I'm going to, have to pause this video while this runs because it takes just a minute to get PDAL installed. Um, but yeah, check out Python Quick Start, geospatialschool.com. It's free. Um, and you'll see how I set up my Python environments for geospatial analysis. I'm going to pause this while this gets done, and I'll just show you the installation once it's ready. And what do you know? I told you wrong. It's not... PDAL Python, it's Python dash PDAL. So if you install this, I'm not gonna run this command, but if you run this command for Anaconda, you'll install PDAL, just activate the environment you installed on, and you're gonna be good to go, okay? So now I'm going to CD to where this folder is. So I'm gonna go to temp, which I believe is just here. And let's do a quick dir call to make sure that we have it. There it is, process.json. So now all I'm going to run is PDAL. I can zoom in on this for you. I'm going to run PDAL pipeline process.json. Okay, before we run this, I want to show you what this looks like. So if I open up my temp directory, I have this process.json. These two are the same. We'll delete one of them. Let's right click on this. Um, let's edit with Notepad++. And you're just gonna see some JSON code here, okay? You'll see that we have a pipeline, a PDL pipeline. It's reading an EPT file. It's reading it from um, a public bucket on AWS. It has bounds that we specified. 
and it's gonna save it to this output.laz. Now you can come in and edit this file if you want to. It's just gonna give an output.laz right in the same directory where I call it from, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna keep it as it is so you can see what happens if you do it this way. Back to the command prompt, pdl pipeline process.json, and I'm gonna run that thing. And this is gonna take some time. And you're probably gonna get a bunch of these errors where it says, um, that this classification code can't be written to LES 1.2 and it's replaced with a value of one. Don't worry about those, it's okay. This is gonna take a few minutes. We're downloading nearly two gigabytes of point cloud data. That's a whole lot of points. But once it's done, you're gonna have an LAZ file in there that you can then add to QGIS and visualize. This is just super slick. So I'm gonna pause this while this download happens and I'll come back and I'll show you what we get when we're ready. Okay, we have that done, it's finished downloading. That took a while, maybe 20 minutes or so, um, but now we're ready to load this into QGIS. First, let's check our temp file, and you can see we have this new file here, output.laz, which is what we want. Now, let's go over to QGIS. All right, so I'm in QGIS, I can go to my browser, I can go to my C drive and my temp folder, and I have output.laz. I'm just gonna drag that straight in here. Um, this is gonna take a while to load again. So you're gonna do some waiting. This is still a lot of data. You can see down here at the bottom that it's loading in those points. It's showing the extent right here, um, but we still need to load those points in. While that's going, I wanna show you one more thing I didn't mention as we did this. Um, I'm gonna go back over here to the LiDAR Explorer. I'm gonna go back to the one where we did this from. I was working on something else as well. Um, you'll notice we have the EPSG here, the output projection. I left this as is. You may want to check that and put it into something projected, you know, like a UTM zone for your specific study area. I think we're going to be okay for this tutorial, but if you want that to come out with a certain projection, you can specify it real easily right there. All right, let's go back over to QGIS. Um, once again, I'm going to pause the video while this loads, then I'll come back and show you just how easy it is to visualize this in 3D. All right, so we've got that loaded in QGIS. You can see that it automatically displayed based on the classification of the point cloud, which depending on how it was created may or may not be a good classification. But we're going to start with that. You can see my classification options over here, my symbology options rather I should say. Now, we want to display this in 3D, and we're just going to do, I think, one thing to start out and make sure that we get this right. So let's go over to our Layers panel right here, and if I double-click or right-click and go to Properties, it pulls up the Properties. We're going to need this Elevation Offset um, to, to be as close to zero as possible, and I mean to have an Elevation Offset as close to possible as zero for the points. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to the statistics here, we can see our Z value minimum, oh, is negative 848.38. That's really interesting. I mean, our maximum is 5046. So this is really interesting because this means there's a Z value that's way, way, way below um, what we want it to be. But we're gonna try to class, we're gonna try to just display this as it is and let's see what happens. Well, I expect to have some issues displaying it, but we'll work through those as we get to it so you can see how I do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. And let's go to View, uh, 3D Map Views, and New 3D Map View. All right, here we go. This is looking interesting already. I don't know why it's all blue. Um, we're gonna drag this out, and I'm gonna use the mouse wheel to try to zoom out here a little ways, or a lot of ways. I don't know what's going on, this is really interesting. And it's zooming very, very, very slowly. Very slowly. And there's no way with these to, uh, to fit it to the screen. I wonder if it's something to do with, I can right click and drag those out. So if you if you or sorry if you center click it'll rotate. This is very very interesting. I'm not sure why 
it's zoomed like it is. I'm just going to drag this off. See if I can see where we're at in the image. So we're kind of over the center of the image. Um, I'm going to try to change the classification or the, the symbology to attribute by ramp. Ooh, there we go. And now we're going by intensity. Okay. There you go. We can see where we are a little better now. Okay. So we can see where we are. I don't know why this is zooming so slowly. It could be an elevation offset thing. So let's go try to just change that. So if we go here uh, and go to the elevation, we can change our offset here. So let's make this like, I don't know, negative 2,000 meters or something. We drop that down. Let's apply that and see what happens. Oh, now we can now we can zoom much better. Okay, so give that a try. We're at a high elevation area. I don't think there's, if you look at our stats, I'll show you what I mean. If you look at our stats, we're at a high elevation area. This point is totally erroneous. There's not a point 850 meters below sea level at this location. So what I did is I dropped this so that the, Z, the zero value for Z is actually 2,000. By saying negative 2,000, that means the Z value, the, the zero value is now 2,000 meters. And it's making this a lot easier to navigate. And I could maybe even change that to 3,000 just to get that closer to zero. Um, but I did that uh, in properties. You can also do it here on the elevation profile here. So we come and change this to negative uh, 3,000 and we might even get better results. Okay, so that's much better. Let's go to our symbology again. Um, and now if we want, we can go back to classification and you can see we have that classification there with our ground points and everything. Now you can use your sender mouse wheel to right click to rotate and then you can, or sorry, center mouse wheel, click your center mouse wheel, push it down to rotate um, and then you can uh, use the, the left click to pan, which is the best way to get these things into perspective. And now you can see reviewing this in 3D. We have some, once again, erroneous points up there, um, which we're just going to ignore for now. There are ways to filter those out with PDAL, but this is all about visualization and downloading, not about um, filtering. So we can take a look at that later. But there you go. There you can see in 3D, and if we rotate maybe all the way around here, it might take just a sec to get the, the downhill perspective on this area. Oh, and now that I freeze it up, I may have frozen it up. We go. Let's rotate and just rotate all the way around so we can look at it from the downhill side. Sorry, this is taking just a minute. It can be a little bit. The viewer is not as easy to navigate as something like Google Earth, which I wish it was, but it's just not, unfortunately. Um, if this could navigate like Google Earth, it would be awesome and way more powerful. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. I really wanna be able to, um, to rotate this and see it from that perspective. It's not gonna work very well. Okay, well, anyway, this viewer is just giving me trouble, but you get the idea. You get the idea here. So now we can come in, the way I like to display this is I like to do it by, actually by ramp, and one really good way to look at this is if we do it by number of returns, um, you can start, whoops, to see where the vegetation occurs because those, those uh, vegetation, whoops, the vegetation has multiple returns, whereas the bare earth does not, the water does not. Um, but I just kind of froze this thing up. There we go. Now we're moving a little bit. But we can... We're having, I'm having issues, you guys. Let's change this back to 2000 and see if that helps. Not a lot. Um, I can close this window and we can make a new 3D view. Let's just try this to start over again here. And let's go view. 3D map views, new 3D map view. Here we go, now we're displaying that intensity. And let's go here, let's zoom out a little. Let's rotate. And I wanna show you how you can tell what these intensities where the vegetation is, because it's really cool. 
Um, once again, we're just having, I'm just having trouble with this one. It might be a little bit of the point cloud's big, and it's having some trouble rendering. Um, but anyway, that's how you can do it. With PDA, you can also apply um, RGB values, and uh, so you can see this in color. But this is the basics of it. You might want to throw the smaller point cloud than I did. This one's almost two gigabytes, which is a little bit unwieldy here, but, I think it's just a super cool way to do this where you can just run basically one command from the command line. Uh, you get this point cloud that downloads and it's seamless, right? You don't have any tiles you have to navigate. It's just seamless. You can pull it into QGIS and you can visualize it. So hope you found this pipeline useful. Once again, I'm sorry for some of the technical difficulties working with that big point cloud and this QGIS 3D viewer, which is good, but it's not as good as it could be if it was Google Earth, um, if it had the same navigation as Google Earth. So hope you found this useful. Um, if you, once again, if you need to learn Python, if you need to know how to install that command line to really easily install PDAL, just go ahead and go check out Python Quick Start at Geospatial School. Thanks for watching.